So it's kind of the end of the day for me, and it's a little hot where I'm working, and uh, probably I'm probably not on my best note here, but you probably saw it, and you're probably like, Jamie, um, um, you made this function, but you didn't really call it here, didn't call it here, didn't call it here, didn't call it. <sighs> Yeah, long day. You've been there, I'm sure. Uh, let's see here. Small amount of frames. So in theory, I should be able to say run tests on frames. I'm kind of scared to do this because I'm kind of replacing this test code. Yeah, all right, whatever. Um, pop run tests on frames. Num frames this test. Run tests on frames. Num frames. Frames this test. Uh, same thing here, right? I want to. Well, we'll get to this later. Uh, and then down here, profiler. Okay, I can't just call that function here because we're doing some special stuff and only adding a f smaller number of samples than the, n the number of categories we gave the profiler. Let's control five this. Please give me some green. Sometimes I feel like I'm watching the prices right and I'm like, big money, big money. Here we go, green. All green, good, feeling good. That was a nice little refactor there. Now it will make myself feel even better. You know, I think I, you well, know, I'm tempted to just copy this and paste it directly there and get rid of this temporary variable, but I don't know if it's going to help in that case. It might help down here. See, I can see here. I control X this, control V that, control Shift L that, and then right here. Well, this down here is pretty much this, but with a plus one on it, right? And that one should fail. And then I'm doing a plus two just because the name's Jamie King. We're going to go a little bit further past it. And these two should fail, but I'm going to comment them out for now. Uh, let's get rid of these because what I just deleted is made up for by that. Uh... Then this, same thing, right? Run tests on frames, like so. And go around several times. Well, that's that's the same as run tests on frames. This much. Control L, L, L. And we have exclude incomplete frames. So, now why am I commenting this out? Why don't I just run it? Well, because I know these are the tests that should fail, and I really just want to turn one on, get it going, and then see if the next one works, and the next one works, and so on and so forth. I'm trying to be as test-driven development as I can. I have a th hunch that once we have this, once we have one of these working, if we do it correctly, then this one will naturally work, and this one will naturally work as well. I'm okay with that. All right, this one may or may not naturally work. We'll probably screw some stuff up as we try to go around several times. But maybe we'll get it right. Who knows? But right now, what I have right now should give me all green, and I need to verify that it is all green. And it is, and that's good. But most importantly, I need to verify that our new tests screw up. Because if our new tests don't screw up, then I have a problem with my refactorings, which I did up here, and then... um. All of a sudden, these really aren't accomplishing anything. So if I don't get red right now, then I can't feel comfortable with my refactorings. Do you see my thought process there? And that's important when it comes to unit testing. And also, you know, in fourth grade, you learn about, or at least when I was in fourth grade, you learn about the scientific process. And you have to come up with a question. Then you, have, then you have to come up with a theory or a hypothesis. And then you have to go and you do the experiment. And then you validate whether your hypothesis was correct or not. And that's the thought process I'm going through here. And the most important part is the hypothesis. All too often, new programmers just run and see what happens. No, you have to be a little smarter than that. Think ahead and say, what do I think will happen? Let's see if it does happen. And if it's different from what you thought, then you just learned a lot. If it's the same as what you thought, well, you learned a little. That's good. But if it's uh, different than what you thought, then you learned a lot. Very critical. So let's just verify again. It should be all green. Oh, no, no, it's not green because I went plus one. <laughs> Our assertion caught it. The assertion's like, you're, you're trying to go past the end of the array. Well, that's because we haven't wrapped this thing up into a circular array. So I'm feeling good. That's good. And one by one, 
I want to verify that these tests fail. The first three that I'm going to implement, I'm going to control F5, make sure that going past, yep, same problem, good. And then let's try to ring around the rosy a little bit farther here. Control F5. Oh, it doesn't compile. What's the problem? Oh, is this the? Yeah, this is an. I need to do a static cast again. Let me, let me copy and paste this. Oh, he said copy and paste. Watch out. Uh, this simply needs to be a one. Oops, a one point five, and then here I can just replace this. What I thought would be a beautiful expression, uh, with a constant. All right, please. Control KC. This one should fail, right? This one should epically fail. We're going way past the end of our array. Okay, that failed. So I'm going to uncomment the two of these. And the goal over the next video or two or, or however long it takes is to get these tests to pass. Let's just verify. The first one will make the assertion and stop.